Hi, this is Brett Harned. Welcome to PM Matters, a Team Ghent interview series that raises the voice of the community and explores what matters to us. Hi, this is Brett Harned. I'm here for PM Matters, and I'm here with Stephen Thomas from White October in Oxford, UK. Stephen is a project manager at White October, and he's organizing The Big Do, which is a conference for digital project managers here in Oxford where the venue is the Cowley Road Methodist Church, and we are sitting in one of the back rooms getting ready for the event. So how are you today? Feeling good. Looking forward to the uh, the big do. Uh, all excited. All the planning's been done. So yeah, looking forward to a great event. Me it's too. Gonna be great. Me too. So I want to talk a little bit about what matters to you as a PM. Um, to start out, can you just tell us how you got into project management? Yeah, I think it's a, a sort of, um, how does anyone get into project management? It was a bit of a, a haphazard uh, journey. Uh, I, I guess it starts with like uh, literature and English, which is what I was studying at university. Uh, and one of the modules was about hypertext and digital. And so, I mean, you know, the, the web was still uh, relatively young, but, you know, kind of, you know, looking at textual analysis. So, so that kind of kindled my interest. Um, and I think people were asking me at the time, you know, what are you going to do with an English degree? I had no idea what I was going to do. And I think I watched the film Field of Dreams several times. Um, and there's a character in that. And he makes educational software that helps people solve their conflicts peacefully. So I thought, well, that, that sounds like a good idea. I'll start telling people that. And um, yeah, then I actually thought, well, how would I do that? And so the, the literature angle led me into publishing. And, but more, you know, digital publishing was really on the rise in educational publishing. And so that got me into kind of managing digital publish, uh, publishing projects. Um, and then very soon I kind of realized that I wanted to get more on the digital side. And there were, there were some things that uh, books publishers were doing digital as an afterthought. And you know it was just fairly obvious that digital was gonna be the future for things. So basically moved around a number of companies um, and then was um, uh, a, a digital project manager by any other name. And after about five years of that, sort of set up my own business doing uh, project management consultancy. Um, before going back into agency world. And now I manage a range of projects from really big CMSs to sort of nice nifty mobile apps um, and just generally love the variety and the experience of it all. That's exciting. I didn't know that we had that in common. I was an <laughs> English major in college as well. And my path was very varied in a similar way to you. What, what kind of um, sort of attributes of your career do you think led you to be a good PM? Um, it's an interesting question. I guess um, you know I'm not I'm not typically the most organised person. I'm not uh, you know uh, as as my wife will say not not uh, necessarily kind of neat and not necessarily all about kind of process. But actually, uh, I think there's a there's a kind of creative side to project management, uh, and so I kind of enjoy engaging with people. I enjoy working with teams, and I really like the idea of kind of breaking down complex problems into smaller steps or something that's kind of seems huge and unwieldy. And like, how do you start something like that? And I, and I love the the kind of the, sort of the nibble the apple challenge. You know, where where do you start? Where you start somewhere, and kind of building from that. Um, and I, you know, I think that that's that's the interesting thing about digital project management. You can have a wide variety of personalities and skills, and you know. Um, they can all be effective at their job, and it's it's really nice working at, at a team now at White October where there's there's a bunch of us, and we are you know we we have share some attributes, but we're all different in many different ways, and we complement each other and learn from each other. And I think again that's the thing now with the with being a digital PM, it's an industry that is constantly changing and moving forward, so you never stop learning from people that have been in this industry a long time, but also from people that are new to it and bringing fresh ideas and fresh approaches. Yeah, I love that approach. So we initially met at DPM UK in Manchester, where you gave a lightning talk. Um, and that was kind of about um, breaking down traditional ways of sort of presenting and, and working with contracts. So I'm curious to know kind of how that topic came up for you. What, what made you want to give a presentation about that? I think it's from the hard learned experience of, uh, you know, being in a fixed price contract when it's not going well and, and realizing no matter how good you are as a PM, sometimes if you're, if you're given the wrong setup or a bad brief and you're locked in, there's, there's limited that you can do apart from kind of damage control and kind of keep your team motivated and try and get to the end and try and sort of salvage, mm -hmm. um, the best that you can do. And that, that just feels, feels wrong. And, you know, the digital software projects are just full of, um, failures or kind of passable successes and and you know this this I think a lot of that is down to just old ways of looking at it and it, it there's only so much you can do 
as a as a project manager once you're kind of locked into a way of working. So for me, it was quite uh, liberating to kind of think beyond that. Um, and so certainly on one project at October, we kind of you know, the 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 CEO uh, Dave Fletcher, you know, when we were sort of struggling with this this model of time and materials or fixed price contract, and it wasn't really working for us. Um, or the client. And so we kind of came up with what we thought was an original way of working, uh, which was this sort of price per point model. And we, we later find out that, you know, other uh, other agencies and other industries do use it. Um, but it was then suddenly seeing that change, how that changed the whole dynamic of the team, how that changed the relationship with the client. And um, it suddenly became, for me, very apparent. This is something that I wanted to share and felt was important. Um, and it also made me realize do, doing that talk, how, you know, we, we're an industry where essentially, uh, you know, the, the demand for our services out, outstrips the supply easily. So even though there are other agencies and other digital PMs, they don't always feel like direct competitors. And in some cases they are, but actually there's a lot that we can learn from one another. And also just because we've got a model that works for you know our, our agency doesn't mean you can apply it to uh, another agency and it'll work for those different you know personnel and different personality types. So um, you know more and more, it's suddenly kind of, connected with me this year that, that there's a lot to be gained from being open about the ways you're working and not try and protect you know yeah. your secrets that it doesn't matter you know someone might might learn from it or take them but it's they're not going to take your business and um, uh, and fostering that kind of relationship then pays dividends because people come back to you and say well you know I tried that and this is an interesting and have you thought about this and you sort of mm-hmm. uh, you, you grow through that method of learning as opposed to you know I have worked in some places where it's very locked down and very closed and it's you never see outside the room and so you always think what you're doing is the right way but there's, there's right. no one sort of saying hey there might be a better way of working here sure and I think too for our community it just helps people be better across the board I think you know I've spoken a lot about project managers and how maybe they don't get as much respect as they should in some places I think that happens to be in those places that are really locked down um, because there are no resources for them but people like you are starting to step up and create events like the big do and meetups and i think people are starting to learn a lot more which yeah it's really cool i mean a, a lot of the value and, and you know some of the talks you've given the, and the conferences and events that you started but for me still going to events like dpm uk or, or, the, or the things that you're doing in the states is you meet people and, and actually just to kind of uh have the support and say actually this job's hard and and when you hear back yeah i, I struggle with it too and, and you know you ex- experience people that you think you know never never suffer a problem you realize they're going through the same thing and it is a difficult right. job because there is if it was a set of fixed rules that you just followed every time then you know uh, any anyone could do it or it'd be automated but it's not it's a it's a constantly you know you, you have to get from start to finish but the route is always changing and yep. spinning around so yeah changing process changing deliverables yeah different cast of characters every time yeah yeah There's lots yeah. of things that make it difficult definitely definitely so switching gears a little bit um you know, the podcast is, or not podcast, Q&A series is called PM Matters. Um, what's a topic that really matters to you? I think more and more, I'm thinking a lot about, um, so automation and empathy has been kind of my current, I'm working with a developer that's, uh, he's really big on automation and he's kind of inspired me. Um, and there's this idea of a uh, sort of empowered laziness, basically, you know, like the, the, the guy that invented power steering, you know, he he did he, he hated you know he, he he did something great through you know wanting to be lazy or the other person that invented an escalator you know they weren't they weren't fitness freaks but they they made something good and it's this idea of if you're doing a a task time and time again that's very repetitive um, you know why are you doing that and often I'm doing updates or things that you know you know three or four times a week and you know they sort of are pretty dull and boring and they don't really have a positive impact for me or especially if I'm reminding team members to do something it becomes like a nagging thing that's. I'm constantly having three or four negative interactions with a team a week and it's just going, can you do this? And there should be technologies there to kind of automate that. So I'm quite interested in, you know, what are, what are the stuff as PMs that we can automate so that we're making space for the more face-to-face empathic things where you sit down with people and you're talking and you're learning and you actually create something or solve ideas uh, as a team. And so, um, yeah, that's my kind of current current thinking is how can we automate a lot of the grim process stuff that needs to be done but you know it doesn't actually need a, a that much thinking about it and make more time for kind of the people stuff the the approach stuff the kind of you know how are you going to do this task how can yeah. we help and how can we change the way that we're working building relationships making connections kind of makes things a little bit easier on a project what are those things that you would kind of automate 
Um, there's a lot of things about, I think, kind of, you know, timekeeping and project tracking and, right. and you know, and, and uh, there's a lot of that that's focused on developers. There's even just some stuff. So, you know, with kind of communications, I'm, you know, reminding people that there's a meeting, you know, going on, you know, there are kind of calendar invites and stuff, you know, right. if this, then that, you know, uh, we're doing some stuff that's quite nice with, um, so when a developer submits a, a pull request, like a code check, mm -hmm. making sure that message kind of goes out to various people and they're kind of pulled into sort of Slack and, there's a sort of a bunch of technology you can kind of use to piece it together. Um, and there's sort of more that I think you could that you could do there. There's some really interesting stuff kind of looking at um, even going as far as billing, that when you actually complete a piece of work, the minute it's kind of signed off and, and deployed to a live site, that that would generate an invoice based on kind of your tracking. Yeah, okay. And it's just kind of, you know, take, take away all that sort of that admin pain of going back and looking in spreadsheets and pulling out of numbers yep. because, you know, that's that's part of the job, but it's like that's not, we don't I can see a way where you wouldn't have to do that and actually that that kind of work is prone to human error so how could you kind of automate your invoicing or automate your uh, time tracking you know based on your your sort of habits so that you can actually focus more on those kind of key meetings or key sure. engagements that um yeah I love that I love the idea of a PM focusing more on relationships and project strategy and not having to be bogged down by the admin work it's cool so um, wrapping up do you have any sort of last words or imparting words for any PMs who are watching? Um, I think just enjoy your work. You know, it's sort of broader than, than, you know, if you're, if you're not, life's too short and if you're not enjoying your projects or you're not, you know, uh, you don't think there's enough variety or, you know, it's project management should be fun. It, it sometimes has a dry reputation, but I, I think it's a really fun creative industry. And if that, if you don't feel that way, you should be trying to change it internally or kind of, you know, um, you know, just making sure you're not taking things too seriously and enjoying life outside of it. You know, there's, there's a lot of fun to be had working with teams. Um, I enjoy it and uh, I hope other project managers out there do too. Great. Well, thank you so much for taking time out of your day. I know you're busy getting ready for a <laughs> conference tomorrow. Um, our listeners or viewers should watch, uh, check out The Big Do online yep. as well as White October. Yeah. And they can follow you on Twitter at Dubossi. That's right. Correct. Yeah. Great. Thanks Excellent. so much. Thank you, Brett. Thanks.